So in just under 24 hours from now, the monotype banners will finally be making their return to the global side of the game for the first time since I don't really even know how long it's been. Um, <laughs> it could be like a year maybe, but possibly longer. I'm not sure. The point is they don't come back that often, which is why a lot of people are justifiably very excited about it. So in this video, I wanted to go over what exactly these banners are for my newer players out there and also give you guys my opinions on whether I feel like they're worth your dragon stones or if you should be maybe considering just skipping it altogether and saving for something better in the future like the seventh anniversary banners for example which are only a few months away okay now real quick before we get into it I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Gamersups. If you guys would like to pick up a waifu shaker like this one for yourself, now this one specifically is sold out, but they're always coming out with new designs. Or if you wanted to try one of their many, many supplement flavors, the one I have in here is the Cherry Limesicle, which I highly, highly recommend, then make sure to head down to the link in my description. And if you decide to buy something, you can use my discount code TIGER for 10% off your entire purchase. Once again, that is GamerSupps and code TIGER for 10% off your entire purchase. Okay, so from there, let's jump into these banners. Now, the way that these banners will be released over the next couple of weeks is we're going to be getting the Fizz banner first, and then four days later, they'll drop the Tech banner, and then four days later, We'll get the INT banner, and then four days after that, it's the STR banner. And finally, four days after that, we'll be getting the AGL banner in that order. Okay, so um, essentially what these banners are, um, what's the best way to describe them? I guess you could say that they're like a better version of the category banners we see all the time, which are absolutely awful, by the way. But instead of having all units from the same category on one banner, we have all units from the same type on one banner. So as you can probably guess for the Fizz banner, we have all of the Fizz type SSRs in the game with the exception of Dokkan Fest units, of course. And uh, the featured units will probably look something like this for the Fizz banner with the two type supports, the Gohan and the Boo, as well as some other, you know, good Fizz SSRs like the Heart Virus Goku, the Fizz Launch, the uh, Fizz Tien, and so on and so forth. Now, the banner might look slightly different from what they had on JP, but it'll probably look something like this. And the other exciting part is that it will also include all of the non Tokon Fest Fizz LRs in the game, like LR Bardock, LR Trunks, the Super Saiyan 2 Angel Vegeta, the uh, Golden Frieza N17 the Broly Trio, Android Trio, and also the Cell slash Cell Juniors. So the reason that a lot of people uh, like summoning on these banners are number one, the type supports are exclusive to these banners. So if you want to get them, for the time being at least, your only option is to summon on these banners. And the other thing is that you have a pretty decent chance at pulling a specific type LR. From these banners right so if you're chasing uh fizz lrs for example like if you really want the vegeta here or if you really want the lr bardock then your chances to pull them from their type banners it's much higher than trying to get them from a general legendary summon banner or even a double rates banner right so those are the two main appeals of type banners i would say and uh, as far as these type supports go I'll quickly show you guys what they're all about. Okay, so starting with the Fizz Gohan here. His leader skill, once token awakened, is Super Fizz types, keep plus 4. HP, attack, and defense, plus 120%. So, not bad, definitely usable, but nothing special. Super attack raises attack and causes supreme damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. And his passive is Fizz types, keep plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% for super fizz types 
and then randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, Fizz excluded, to Fizz key spheres, attack and defense plus 20% per Fizz key sphere obtained. So, the main reason why these units are so sought after is because they are unquestionably the best supports in the game for their specific type and class, right? So, for example, the Gohan is Q plus 3, attack and defense plus 50% for Super Fizz types. The uh, Super Boo is the same thing except for Extreme Fizz types. And uh, the same thing applies to all of the other type supports as well, like the AGL Pan, for example, is the best Super AGL support. The Rildo is the best Extreme AGL support, and so on and so forth. And if you go through the details for each of these units, um, the only main difference you'll see is in the super attack effect, and of course for the uh, leader skill, it'll be extreme or super depending on if the unit is extreme or super, right? But their passive is almost identical across the board. It's always going to be uh, a certain type, key plus 3, and then attack and defense plus 50% for whatever type and class they are, and randomly changes key spheres to their typing as well, and then attack and defense plus 20% key sphere obtained and this applies to all 10 of the supports so now the question becomes even though these units are exclusive to the type banners and even though they are very cool for what they do are they actually still good are they worth going after and i've been giving it some thought recently i've been using these units quite a bit as well just to refresh my memory a little bit and I've come to the conclusion that they're not really that impressive anymore, at least for today's standards. You know, like, the support is great. Like, what they do or what they're meant for is excellent. The, you know, attack and defense plus 50% key plus 3 is one of the best support um, passives in the entire game for their specific type, right? But couple things to keep in mind is that number one, it is limited, right? They can only support one class and type specifically. So if you're running a team with multiple types of units, then their effectiveness and their usefulness will be significantly decreased, right? And on top of that, as far as their own damage and defense goes, I mean, 20% attack and defense per key sphere obtained is not bad, but their stats aren't the greatest. I mean, even at rainbow status, this boo is only getting 13,765 attack and 9,950 defense. So what that means is on most turns, their defense will be very lackluster and their damage will also be pretty disappointing, okay? And this also applies to all of the other units. I'm talking about the Int Vegeta, the Int Gohan, the um, uh, AGL Pan, Rildo, the Tech Tien, the Tech... Uh, sell and the list goes on they're really just not that great anymore outside of the support and once again the support is pretty limited right just for one class and one type it's not like all tech types for both these guys this guy is super tech this guy is extreme tech and that's it for the support side the orb changing is nice don't get me wrong the orb changing is great especially if you want to pair them up with a unit that requires a lot of orbs like for example the uh, arguably best linking partner for the str uh, kefla would be this kappa because not only is he supporting her for attack and defense plus 50 percent he's also changing orbs and she needs a lot of orbs to get her full passive right so i'm not saying they're not useful they can be very useful in certain situations on certain teams but as a whole their performance is just kind of meh. It's kind of meh. Not great defense, not great offense, um, good support, but that's about it. And also the fact that they are currently exclusive. They might add them maybe to like one of the coin shops in the future or give us another way to acquire them somehow. I'm not really sure. It's hard to say, right? But right now they are still exclusive to these banners, which don't come around that often but if you were wondering whether like they're great units as a whole I would have to say no I would have to say no and obviously this is 
accounting for the fact that they don't have Extreme Z Awakenings yet. If these guys get Extreme Z Awakenings uh, at some point in the future, they could become very, very good once again. But I'm talking about currently with no EZAs. All right, so that kind of does it for the support side of things. Um, you know what? I'll quickly show you guys the uh, other units, or at least a few of them, just to compare between, you know, the Fizz ones. Um, like I said, they're very similar across the board. As you can see, the Tien, uh, Super Attack E plus 4, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 120%, uh, Super Attack, Supreme Damage, greatly lowers Attack and Defense. The main difference between these guys would be the effect on the Super Attack. And then passive, tech type key plus 3, plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% for super tech types. Randomly change key spheres of a certain type, tech excluded, 2 tech key spheres, and then attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained. Um, and you know, for, let's see, the Int Vegeta, kind of the same thing. Uh, the leader skill will be extreme int types, key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 120%. Super attack, raises attack, supreme damage, medium chance to stun, and then passive, int types key plus 3, additional attack and defense plus 50% for extreme int types, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, int excluded, 2 int key spheres, and then attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained. So there you go, those are the supports, and once again my opinion is that they're not that great. <laughs> they're not that great. If you're a collector, it's a different story if you're just like someone who really wants to have as complete of a Dokkan collection as possible, then yeah, these banners might be a lot more appealing to you just because these units are pretty exclusive for the time being, right? Now let's talk about the banners themselves for a minute as far as the featured units go. Um, the featured SSRs on each of these banners aside from the supports are all pretty decent, but they're not that rare because they are going to be available in the general pool for every single banner, right? So you got units like this uh, Int Garlic Jr., which is great, Vados is great, um, this Shenron, Oceanus Shenron is also very good, uh, the Frieza is great, the Cab is great, like they're all good non dokkan Fest units, but are they worth chasing on a banner like this? Not really, in my opinion, but obviously that's different for different people, right? And then moving on to the LRs, this is another pretty big appeal of these banners. You have all of the, you know, specific type LR for each banner, like the Int banner with the Int LRs, the, uh, you know, STR banner with all the STR LRs, the AGL banner with the AGL LRs, and of course the Fizz banner with the Fizz LRs. So if you are looking for a specific type of LR or just a specific LR within one of the pools of uh, one of these banners, then the appeal might be much higher for you in that sense. But something you really wanna keep in mind before you go into one of these banners chasing for an LR is that the rates on these banners are different from your average Dokkan Fist banner or legendary summon banner and so on and so forth because usually the rates to pull a featured SSR on most banners is 5%. And then unfeatured SSRs is 5% as well. But on these banners, it's actually a 7% rate for the featured SSRs and only a 3% rate for the unfeatured SSRs, which means that you have a better chance to pull one of the featured units like the Tian or Second Form Cell or one of the other type supports, which is good if you're chasing those guys. But if you're chasing LRs, then it's bad because your rate to get a unfeatured SSR, which is all of the, you know, LRs, is quite a bit lower. So even though you still have a better chance to get a specific type LR on these banners compared to a general legendary summon banner, for example, it's not quite as high as you would think because they lowered the unfeatured SSR rate from 5%. Uh, on standard banners to 3% on this banner, which makes it less likely for you to get one of these unfeatured LRs. Not to say it's impossible, obviously it is still possible, but just uh, definitely something to keep in mind while you're summoning, right? So uh, there you have it guys, that is your overview of all of these type banners. Um, given the general tone of what I've been saying over the past 
10, 15 minutes or so, you can probably guess that I'm honestly not the biggest fan of these banners. Um, I think that most people, like your average free-to-play player, should heavily consider skipping them. I know the supports are tempting. I know the you know potential to get LRs is also very tempting, but given the fact that the supports are kind of outdated at this point and the 3% unfeatured rate for SSRs as opposed to you know 5% makes it kind of hard for me to recommend for people to summon. So I think the smart thing to do as a free to play player would be to skip these banners completely and save your stones for the anniversary banners or even just you know another regular like token fist banner or something like that because i think the value there is just much better um if these guys were to get a extremes the awakening then the banners will come back so it's not something you have to worry about right now um you'll have a chance to pull them again if they do get those easy aids right so for the time being just right now as of april 7th 2022 i'm recommending a skip for basically all of these banners now if you wanted to go into maybe one of them i would consider uh probably the sdr banner as the best one because i feel like the collection of unfeatured outlars here is probably the best of uh, all the banners you got the ui goku you got lr turles um lr broly uh the godku and hit are very good as well Tapion and Minosha are really solid. The other guys are okay, but as a whole, a very good pool. And uh, Super SDR also happens to be one of the best monotypes, if not the best monotype in the game right now. So having Kaba would be pretty useful. Um, aside from that, I mean, the AGL LRs could be better, in my opinion. The Fizz LRs um, could also be better. Uh, I think Tech might be second best with the LR Jiren, the uh, Gohan here, Goku and Frieza, uh, Tech LR Broly. Um, yeah, I'd probably say Tech is number two as far as the LR pool goes. And uh, Int is... Mm, okay, so yeah, um, STR would be the best one to go for to me, but it depends on which teams you're trying to build, which... Uh, units you personally like so that's something for you to decide but uh that is my recommendation guys that is gonna do it for today's video it might not be the answer that you were maybe looking for but it's just honestly how i feel i think the supports are outdated i think the three percent ssr rate compared to five percent for unfeatured ssrs is kind of unfair and really turns me off from trying to chase for lrs on these banners and uh, yeah, I recommend a skip for most people. Obviously, if you're a pay to play player or even a whale, then you don't really need me to tell you what to do with your stones. But if you are free to play, if you don't have that many ways to get stones, then you should probably just pass on this one uh, for the time being. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, a quick reminder, to check out gamer subs in my description for waifu shakers uh, supplements shirts sleeves other accessories all that good stuff code tiger for 10 percent off your entire purchase and as always if you guys liked today's video then make sure to like the damn video sub to the channel if you're new hit that notification bell so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and until next time have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.